Hey everybody, it is the one and only, it is Melanie Day here with You've Got Curls and Hair Loss Center and wanted to always bring you the right information, the facts about hair care, different types of techniques, and then also um, just talking about things for this month, especially in light of being a Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So let's go right into it. So what I wanted to share with you today is basically a new treatment that's probably been out maybe like for five to 10 years is called a cool cap. And for anyone who is currently undergoing chemotherapy or that's about to start chemotherapy, this may be of interest to you because, you know, a lot of us, we, we are kind of scared about starting things because we don't know the side effects of it. And we may not know what the side effect will be for our hair. And especially for women, that is a terrifying thought to think about medication, um, you know, taking out our hair. But that is why I wanted to share this really important information with you. So let me share it with you really fast. Oh, yeah. So this is the cool cap therapy. So yeah, you can kind of see how this is situated. Um, it almost looks like a helmet, sort of, kind of. But this is something that you definitely would not do at home. You need to be at a, um, either at the hospital or at the cancer center to have this done. And you definitely want to have a conversation with your oncologist to see if you're a candidate for this, because, you know, depending on your treatment and depending on the area of the cancer, they may or may not um, want you on this type of therapy. But I wanted to share this with you. And this was shared um, with me by um, a medical professional a few weeks ago at a conference I was attending. So this is what I'm sharing with you. So basically this treatment is used to reduce hair loss from chemotherapy. Um, and today we're specifically talking about breast cancer, but it can also be used for any type of cancer. And if a person who's on chemotherapy and if hair loss is a major concern for them. So it's not just for women, it can also be for men as well. So basically this process um, includes cooling the patient's head. So basically how it works is that this cool cap that you see here, it reduces the blood flow around the hair follicles. It also decreases the blood flow and it reduces the amount of chemo that reaches the cells of the hair follicles. So yeah, I'll repeat that again, because I think that's pretty amazing. It reduces the blood flow around the hair follicles. It decreases the blood flow and reduces the amount of chemo that reaches the cells of the hair follicles. This part is why I think that you really need to make sure that you have a conversation with your oncologist because of, um, of this factor here, of, the, of it saying that it reduces the amount of chemo that reaches the cells of the hair follicles because they may not like that. So another thing it does, it decreases the activity of the hair follicles and decreases the chemo on the follicle cells and prevents or reduces hair loss from the scalp. So that, I feel like that's amazing because if you know that the way that chemotherapy works, it basically goes in like a sledgehammer and attacks the fastest, any fast growing cell. And believe it or not, our hair is one of the fastest growing cells that's out there. And so chemo is going to recognize it and think that it's a cancerous cell. But in reality, when it's not, it's our hair, but it doesn't know the difference. So it's just going to go ahead and, and um, you know, take that out. So this is why this is so amazing that it helps to slow down the progress of the chemo um, with the hair loss. But one of the common side effects that a lot of people experience with this, because this is like some pretty intense coldness um, that's, that's gonna be like on your scalp and everything. So a common side effect is our headaches, um, neck and shoulder discomfort, chills and scalp pain. So this is something that is not recommended for children um, at all or for minors. Um, it's uh, more than likely it probably hasn't even been tested on children. So it's be just because of, of, um, how it feels and, and how, an, um, uncomfortable it can be. So it's, it's better for adults, men and women better for adults, but they call it a hypothermia cooling device. So basically this, what you see here is worn for about 30 minutes before your chemo infusion. Um, well, before the infusing the chemo drug. 
and then during the infusion, and then 90 minutes afterwards. So it's a process. So it's 30 minutes before infusing the chemo drug, during the infusion drug, and 90 minutes afterwards. So you can see why this can be kind of uncomfortable because of how long you're having to wear this device. And and two, think about, you know, some patients, they may have treatments um, maybe a few times a week or a month or something like that. So that's another thing to kind of consider. Now, I actually had a client that came in to the salon recently, probably about a month or so ago. She's in her 40s and she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And this was a really big deal for her, um, especially being so young, like when she was diagnosed, I think she might've been in her late thirties initially when she was diagnosed with breast cancer and hair loss, you know, am I going to lose my hair? I don't want to lose my hair. I don't want my kids to be traumatized by mommy not having hair. So she did her research and she found out about the cold cap therapy and these are very expensive. So more than likely you will need to go um, have this done either at your oncologist or at your local cancer center. And you can actually um, reach out to your doctors and see if they provide this. They might actually have this service, especially with their integrated for the functional medicine um, part of their, um, their facility that they may offer like different alternative treatments. So you just have to ask. But anyway, oops, um, go back. Yeah, so anyway, I wanted to share this and I wanted you to know that there are solutions and that you're not by yourself, you're not alone. Um, you know, chemotherapy and hair loss doesn't have to be scary and that there are things that are out there that are working um, that can help prevent hair loss. And even if your hair texture does change, because I've seen that with a lot of women and with men, my, my uncle in particular, um, he had lung cancer and, you know, he had like this massive beard. And when he first lost his hair, um, you know, of course he lost his hair, but when the hair came back, it was beautiful. It was like this beautiful, soft, curly texture. And, you know, like we had never seen his hair like that before, but I've had a lot of clients who have, who have undergone uh, chemotherapy themselves and all their lives have had straight hair and now all of a sudden their hair is curly. Well, what do I do? So that's why I'm here for you. Regardless of what your texture is, regardless of what your scalp condition is, um, you know, I can do my best to help you. And then if it's out of my scope of expertise, if I don't really know, or if it's, you know, something that is a little bit more detailed, you need to be referred to a medical professional. I also have access to different dermatologists, oncologists, um, therapists, whatever you need. I have access, access to those medical professionals as well. So just wanted to share this with you and um, definitely take notes, share it with your oncologist, share with your friends and family that might be undergoing chemotherapy or they might be about to start. And also to um, do the research. There's a lot of research that's out there on this. And don't be, you know, don't be um, scared if a doctor says, well, no, I don't really think it's a good idea, you know, for this, for whatever reason, maybe you have to get a second opinion or maybe just ask, really ask why, why, why don't you think this is a good idea? I'm really concerned about, you know, potentially losing all of my hair or will my hair be the same when it regrows, when it comes back, what would it be like? So have that conversation from the jump, from the very beginning with your doctor, let them know that this is something that's very important to you because they are more focused on your health and keeping you alive. But you yourself also have things that you're concerned about. And if it's your hair and um, your image, that's, you know, that's something that's very important to you and let them know that this is something that you, um, <laughs> there's like a, a net that, that you are needing and looking for. So once again, this is Melanie Day with You've Got Curls and Hair Loss Center and always sharing the right information, techniques, and tools, and community with you. So I'll see you soon. Bye.